Sometimes, a watch is so striking, the best way to introduce it is to let it introduce itself. After my last Timex review, I decided I needed a little more diversity in my channel before I did another Timex. But then I saw this, the Timex Southview Multifunction. After using a little Google Foo, I realized there really wasn't much out there on this watch, so I decided that it was just too pretty to ignore. I believe that most people's first impression of this watch can be summed up in three words and a question mark. That's a Timex? Yes, yes it is. The first thing that grabs your attention is that brilliant blue dial. It's very rich, very reflective navy blue dial inside a very large round case. The hour indicators are in a Roman and stick fashion. The indicators are applied and have a reflective gold color, as is the Timex logo. The white dots on the chapter ring and the subdials appear to be painted on. Speaking of subdials, there are three. And this is a multifunction, not a chronograph. So the subdials are for the day, date, and 24 hour. The subdials are also in blue, but with detailed circular lines emanating from each center, giving it a striking and reflecting contrast to the main dial. The hour and minute hands are sword shaped in gold with white loom. The subdial hands and seconds are more of a stick shape, but also in gold. To say that this dial is shiny would be an understatement. It is simply beautiful. Every time I look at this dial, it reminds me of another watch that I've been wanting to check out, the Orient Sun and Moon in blue. I've never actually seen one in person, but I hear they are stunning. Now, the crown is at the three o'clock position and is also in gold. It's a little small, but easy to pop in and out and manipulate. So, to say that Timex's instructions are lacking would be a vast understatement. So to make things simple for those who just want to know how to set their watch, here you go. For everyone else, skip ahead a minute. So the good news is that the date subdial is quick set and can be controlled by the crown. But unfortunately the day is not. So the first thing you need to do is set the day subdial. Pull the crown out to the second position. Advance it to about 11 p.m. You should see a slight wiggle on the day subdial. Advance the time to around 3 a.m. and you will see the day advance. Then rotate back to 11 and repeat until you have the right day. It's a little bit of a pain, but hopefully you won't need to do this often. After that, adjust the watch to the proper time. Then put the crown into the first position and rotate it to set the date as you normally would. So back to the watch itself. The crystal is mineral glass, is very large, round, and completely flat, giving it an almost magnifying glass look to it. Now the case of the Southview is made of brass, with most likely a chrome coating, so it has that smooth chrome texture but it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. As you look at the side view of the south view, you can see that the case tapers as it heads to the back, giving it an almost bowl-like shape, or a small cross-section of a sphere. Looking at the watch in general, I'm not sure if Art Deco is the right style, but it is the term that pops in my head when I look at it. While the case is brass, the case back is a brushed stainless steel. Water resistance is a mere 30 meters, so be careful with it. And as usual with Timex, it's unfortunately a snap-off case back. And as to the watch's strap, they're not bad. It's actually much better than I was expecting. They are a little thin, but they have a nice texture. And it even has that nice new leather smell. 
due to the case being a very large circle, I think at first glance the straps appear a little smaller than they are, but they are 20 millimeters wide. But it does accentuate the large circular case. The South View has a bit of good news and bad news when it comes to illumination. The good news is that it has loom, but it's not very good. Although it is a dress watch, so in my book it gets a bonus point for even trying. Unfortunately, this watch does not have the Indiglo system, which is a little bit of a disappointment considering that a lot of other dress watches from Timex does. But from my understanding of how the Indiglo system works, I think they would have a hard time doing it with such a rich color for dial. I think the dial actually has to be a little translucent for the technology. As for the dimensions, it is 41 millimeters without the crown, 43 width. Lug to lug is 43 with a thickness of 10 millimeters. And as I said before, the straps are 20. The Timex Southview wears better than I thought. I thought it would feel like a giant round shield strapped to your wrist, but it actually wears pretty nice. Because the watch is so round, it tapers before it hits your wrist. So it wears smaller than you would expect for a 41 millimeter. And it doesn't hurt that it's fairly thin and only weighs 43 grams. Now, since this is a Timex, it's inevitable that someone will want to know how loud the ticking noise is. This multifunction movement is not quite as loud as you'd find on the day-only movements, such as the normal weekender. But it is not quite as quiet as the chronograph models. I'd say it's about halfway in between those. There are two other versions of the Southview, but the blue is by far my favorite. There is no other way to say it than it is simply beautiful. It's probably the most elegant looking Timex I've ever seen. And definitely looks like a watch that should cost much more. So while the design of the watch gets an A+, the functionality side of it could use a little bit of improvements. I won't hold the lack of indiglo against it because I don't think you can include it and achieve the same design look but the 30 meter water resistance and adjusting the day could be better. So the Southview multifunction usually runs around 55 to $72. With that in mind, if you want an affordable dress watch, something that is different than the norm, something that is bold and just pops off your wrist, then on the lower end of that range, I would definitely recommend it. I can't think of anything else that even comes close to resembling it around that price. But I have a hard time recommending this watch at the higher end of that price range. But if this is still the look you want, then by all means go for it, because everything else, even remotely close, will probably bore you. But I can't help but think that for a little bit more, you can get a lot more bang for your buck. At around $100, there are some very nice looking Seikos. Although, again, the design would probably bore you compared to the Southview. And, a little bit more than that, and you're starting to head into Orient Bambino territory. Now, Timex has a lot of competition in this area. Not only are they the Japanese companies, but they also have to fight off the latest fashion brand that's trying to disrupt the industry. And on top of that, that's not to mention all the direct-from-China imports like AliExpress and Gearbest. Yet Timex has somehow found a way. They have become simultaneously a respected go-to watch for the older generations, yet are still considered trendy by the younger generations. They focus on making great affordable watches, yet are one of the few brands to do so that are respected by most watch enthusiasts. But they've accomplished this by creating watches like the Southview, by creating watches that are both beautiful yet affordable that rely on classic styling, yet remain still distinctly Timex. And as long as they keep doing this, they shouldn't have anything to worry about. So, what's your favorite budget dress watch? Let me know in the comments. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>